Hello everyone. I am Nizal Muhammad. I'm from Malaysia. Yes, of course. And welcome to International Affairs, a segment on Nizal and Co, a refreshing avant-garde variety online talk show where we share stories, artists, and anything that impacts our life. Yes, let's go directly to the point of discussion today. It was, yes, it was the making of history. The U.S. presidential election had the highest electoral turnout in a century. More than 100 million people cast their ballots in early voting before election day, and tens of millions more added their vote on Tuesday, November the 3rd, 2020. After nearly four days of tagging and tabulating votes and national anticipation, of course, with controversies here and there of the election outcome, it was supposed to be an obvious result. Obvious result as uh, Joseph R. Biden Jr. emerged as the president elect on that Saturday of that week. But the story doesn't end there. These are not normal times, and Donald Trump is not a conventional ethical. Concessions that used to be a part of the political process have been replaced by allegations of voter fraud and election stealing, loud all caps shouting on Twitter, and plans for a million march of Trump on Washington. So then, what will happen to this nation that calls itself the champion and proponent of world's democracy? And more importantly, what's the end result? Or what's the end game? So today we have with us two guests I wish to uh, introduce to you, uh, one in Bangkok and the other in New York South, right in the middle of, uh, shall we say, the action is where the action is. All right, so both of them are here with me. It's Stuart Ward, all right, uh, that's, yeah. Oh, oh sorry, on my, <laughs> on my right. And we have uh, here with us, um, another good friend of ours, and there's Saiful, okay, Saiful Saladin. Let me introduce to you, because I'm sure some of you may know him, because he has quite a, a part playing a role on screen. Let me introduce to you who he is. Stuart Ward is a global human rights and social justice activist with a special emphasis on Palestine. He is currently based in Bangkok, Thailand. A qualified chartered accountant, I am surprised to know that actually, but had worked, another surprise, 25 years in the music and entertainment industry in so many capacities, including, get what, guess what, radio DJ, TV host, and later on become the MD of a music export trade organization before moving to Thailand in 2004. Uh, he did pronounce this, you know, he said himself as British by birth, Swedish by choice. I like to talk about him that later on, possibly in another session. Stuart worked as the controller at the Swedish International Development Corporation Agency or the Development Corporation section of the Embassy of Sweden in Bangkok. And throughout his life, Stuart has taken a keen and active interest in current affairs and politics with a strong emphasis on social justice and human rights. And in fact, he founded the Palestine Solidarity Campaign Thailand in 2007. And that's our learned professor <laughs> and experienced uh, uh, an experienced tv host i would say as well uh Stuart Ward. next we have a very young guy okay his name is saifu saluddin my fellow malaysian actually he's a graduate student on international affairs economic and political development covering based in new york usa yes he is a student but he had served as the associate economist and later uh, later on as a policy analyst at the Financial Intel Intelligence Unit of Bank Negara Malaysia, Central Bank of Malaysia in 2020, which is about this year, of course. He moved on to work uh, to, uh, to study in New York, actually, as a researcher, work as a researcher and study as well, I suppose, on sustainable economic development strategies for post-pandemic recovery at the Economic Transformation Group Incorporated, while participating as a political affairs intern at the Security Council of Institution. Currently, Saiful is attached as a research assistant, empirical studies of conflict at Princeton University. Wow, these are good guys, you know, with vast experience. All right, young or old doesn't matter. Okay, right now, let's come to the first question that I think I wish both of them to share their thoughts. Now, you have heard about this, you have read about this, you have been following this, 
you know, in the case of Saiful, you are there in the midst of it. So what is your take on the situation in America? In America, currently? I think I'll go now first with the person who is in Bangkok, feeling like an um, original British, but feeling like a Swedish. <laughs> okay, yeah. maybe Stuart, you can have your thoughts here. Sure. Well, first of all, Nizal, thank you very much for having me on the program. And uh, I must say, uh, listening to the to, to Seifel's qualifications, I feel like saying, first of all, I'm not worthy, but um, uh, nevertheless, I will do my best. Um, I, uh, as you have pointed out, I, I had a lifelong interest in current affairs and politics. So I've seen a few things in my life, but never anything like the um, the, the 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 Trump story. Uh, uh, or the Trump nightmare, as I prefer to think of it as, you know, and thank goodness it's soon to be over, at least with him in power. But um, in, in answer to your, your question, really, I think there are two aspects. One is that Donald Trump is a totally unprincipled person. He knows nothing about principles or political ideologies. He's neither liberal nor conservative or socialist or whatever. He's nothing. He's just in it for himself. He's a, a an egomaniac, a narcissist, uh, a, a very selfish person who is just out for it himself. Um, and he saw an opportunity be, uh, because uh, America, even during Obama, uh, has, has seen a widening gap between the rich and poor. Not only America, by the way, this is something, this has been a trend across the world. Um, but we're, uh, we've certainly seen it in America with like, they, they say there's about, a, uh, uh, this, this figure might be outdated now, about half a million people alone uh, sleeping on the street at night, every night in America, anywhere in America. So the, the, the and, and the income and wealth gap is at the highest now, I think, uh, than it's been in 50 years. So with those, those kind of statistics and that kind of background, there, ha there has been a growing, and understandably so, a disaffection with politics, uh, discontent, and people with a load of grievances. And again, understandably so. And so I think this came out already in the 2016 election, which is why we got the surprise of Trump winning, because... Uh, no one had understood, you know, when Hillary Clinton, for example, and all the experts were going on about the economic growth that had been, the ordinary American blue-collar blue worker or working class, as we call it, where I come from, uh, were really dissatisfied. They said, what, what do you mean economic growth? I've not seen any. And, you know, Trump realized that and he tapped into it and won the election. And he's very much doing that today as well. Again, it's populism. Uh, you, you you turn your coat according to the way the wind's blowing. Uh, you you sense what the what what the mood is uh, with ordinary with the majority of voters, and you you just appeal to their basis of instincts accordingly. And that's exactly what he's done, what he's doing now, and what he's going to do, I'm afraid, in the coming years. When we finally evict him from the White House, uh, he's still going to, as we, we saw on Saturday, the demonstrations that were organized in, in Washington uh, that he capitalized on, he even uh, did a motorcade. You know, so unstatesmanlike and so unpresidential again, um, so I think the combination of all these factors is what's given rise to him. It could have, if the circumstances have been a little bit different, I think we could have just as easily seen Bernie Sanders. And it should have been Bernie Sanders tapping into this discontent because he's the one who actually has policies. He's the one who actually has an ideology. And he is the one that, if in power, would be able to implement it and make life one hell of a lot better for ordinary Americans, which right. Trump has not done so, and will never do. Okay. Right. We have heard from the man. Let's talk to the young man. What's what's your take? The old uh, man you just heard from Nizal. Say it, the old man. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm I'm trying to be very, 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 very diplomatic. <laughs> okay. How loud I'm saying, Uh Yeah, I think uh, in the last four years, um, in in his administration, we not only seen this backlash against um, what we call the or what a lot of people try to term as um, uh, 
the establishment politics, uh, not just in America, but all around the world as well. We've seen the rise of Marine Le Pen and, and the Front National in, in France, and we see figures like Viktor Orban in Hungary, Narendra Modi in, in India. And what Trump uh, has done, or Trumpism has done, is to make this uh, nationalist politics more mainstream once again, um, activating uh, a lot of this uh, base or people who hasn't been uh, voting in a long time. Uh, as, as Stuart rightly pointed out, you know, people with a lot of grievances who thought that, you know, uh, all this politics doesn't really help them, but suddenly come this figure, uh, say, and, and uh, you know, so brash, so, so unconventional, and, and, you know, they start to regard him as a hero. But, you know, his toxic politics, his toxic um, uh, rhetoric has uh, has done a lot of damage uh, in 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 the U.S. Uh, as well as uh, in the world affairs. As as a student of international affairs, uh, I observe in the last few years how uh, the Trump administration has caused a lot of uh, chaos in in international affairs and in international relations uh, with um, you know uh, without the U.S. as the for for a long time we have the U.S. as the leader. Uh, as a credible mm -hmm. leader of uh, of international politics, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, seen some of the Obama era uh, achievement like JCPOA uh, with Iran mm -hmm. um, and the Paris Agreement uh, that's supposed to tackle a problem that is uh, that that is threatening us and the future right now. It's the climate change is a problem that we need to tackle right now and we need a credible in, uh, leader in the world affairs which trump administration has not brought in the last few years so as a young uh as a as a, as a young a person as, a, as someone who is uh ob been observing a uh, keen observer of international affairs and national politics i i personally am am looking forward for for a biden harris administration and looking forward for that return to normalcy, return to liberal democratic norms, um, and, and a reversal in the US uh, isolation, isolationism, as I can, maybe we can term it as uh, isolationism, yes. uh, and, and that reversal in, in uh, international cooperation. Because in the last few years alone, Trump has not only uh, pulled out of the Paris Agreement, he pulled out of JCPOA, and, and in the middle of the worst pandemic in a century, he pulled America out of, uh, he pulled the United States out of uh, the World Health Organization. So these are kind of things that, uh, as Stuart po rightly pointed out, like he, he, uh, he doesn't care about anyone else. He doesn't care about anything else. He only look out for himself. And that kind of show in the way he conduct his administration, he conduct his, his politics. and it, and it that has cost everyone else around the world a lot, not just the United States. So I'm looking forward for, for Biden-Harris administration and see how the United States um, can come back to the table when once again, uh, yeah, to be part of the solution of the, of the uh, world's problem. Hmm. Say we, are, we take a break for a while and now we're coming back and I'm going to ask uh, first I pull a question and followed by the one and only Mr. Stewart. dihasilkan daripada sarang burung walid yang diambil khas dari Mua Johor. Pure Bird Nest dihasilkan dari sarang burung berkualiti tinggi, direbus segar dan tanpa bahan pengawet seperti pewarna dan perasa. Pure Bird Nest mengandungi protein, asid amino dan mineral untuk perkembangan kesihatan secara menyeluruh dan meningkatkan sistem imun tubuh badan. 
Pure Bird Nest hanya akan disediakan sekiranya terdapat tempahan dari pelanggan. Begitulah kami menjaga kesegaran produk kami. Pure Bird Nest juga bagus untuk menjaga kesihatan luaran dan dalaman. Oleh itu, ianya sesuai bagi semua peringkat umur untuk dijadikan minuman harian keluarga. Dapatkan Pure Bird Nest dengan harga yang berpatutan dari kami. Okay, welcome. We're back, and I'm Nizal Muhammad on this particular segment called International Affairs on Nizal and Co. All right. Okay, Stuart. You know, when you speak, I mean, we talk about uh, about these people. You know, uh, I just don't understand the Republicans themselves. It's so obvious, yet they do not come in 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 a in a group to no. advise or even to. To give their thoughts against what's being done, because it it, it tarnish the the reputation of Republican themselves. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, I am in no way a conservative or a Republican, but I I respect those who who are true conservatives who actually uh, feel strongly about it. You know, uh, whether they're British conservatives, Malaysian conservatives, or American conservatives. But the thing is, as you know, the point I was trying to make in the beginning here now, and we talked about yesterday, that Trump. Uh, there is no ideology. He, he's nothing. You know, he's just a, he's for Trump. You know, whatever benefits Trump, Donald J. J. Trump is is good. You know, everything else is bad. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, but there are Republicans who who don't accept, who have uh, uh, withdrawn their support and voted and openly said they voted for Biden. And you know, there's something like the Lincoln Project. They they've been the ones actually during the presidential campaign who produced the the best materials, the best videos anyway, that, that were, were put out in the election campaign, the, the Lincoln Project. They were so good. Their videos have been so good. And uh, there are a lot of key, even key Republicans, uh, uh, as I say, uh, um, expressing their, their distaste for the whole thing. But unfortunately, the majority, uh, like the Ted Cruz's and the Marco Rubio's and all the rest of them, uh, are, are all just accepting it because they're afraid of losing their seats because mm. Trump managed to um, hypnotize and convince a lot of gullible and, you know, to, to use the word ignorant people mm. um, about, you know, how great he is for them. And this, of course, the slogan is perfect America first, you know, without anyone... Uh, understanding the consequences of that, which mm -hmm. which Saif was in, a, in, 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 he was into a little bit a moment ago, you know mm -hmm. the fact that um, Trump doesn't believe in multilateralism, and you know it's America first, but it's been America alone because you know the rest of us in the world when we hear America first. Uh, okay, I'm, I've never been very positive to America, as you've understood, anyway. But, you know, a lot of people are quite positive about America in the world. And, you know, but if you, so if you are and you get the leader saying America first, you think, well, I'm in Malaysia. I think Malaysia should be first in that case. Or I'm in the UK. I think the UK yeah. should be first. Or in Sweden, Sweden should be first. And you, then you understand that if we all reason like that, what sort of world yeah. do we get, you know? Yeah. And what he's yeah. not understood it's America alone, you know, and, yes, and even the only superpower in the world cannot achieve anything on it internationally anyway, and not even domestically, I think, on its yes. own. That's what they've, got, they've not understood. Yes, there's a concept of very not inclusive at all. Now, let me go back to Saiful and hope that he's well. <laughs> Are you there, Saiful? <laughs> oh, yes, now? yes. Ken, Ken, that's, that, that's okay. better. All right. Okay. I think uh, uh, now I know the uh, sustainability of uh, Stuart. Until today, until now, his <laughs> his connection is okay. <laughs> so he has he's got the good vibes. Okay, all right. Coming back to Saiful. Saiful, uh, we mentioned just now a little bit on on Republican, but I I'll wait until after this to talk about the Republican. But I'm just wondering, being in America throughout the whole process before, you know, during and after election. How was the transition like? You know, the atmosphere, the reaction, the impact on the people, particularly. So, can you share with us some of your um, experience yeah. on ground? Uh, I think uh, I think it's a very uh, interesting time to be in the U.S. right now, in the middle of the global pandemic. Uh, 
in, the, in, in New York as well. Uh, I think for a long time in April, May, June, New York specifically is like the epicenter of the pandemic in, in the world. In fact, we have the highest number of cases, highest number of deaths. Um, and I think it's also worth noting that I'm in, in New York, which is a very yeah. democratic state, uh, uh, a very blue, uh, dark blue. And, and I'm also in a, in, in, in a university environment uh, in, in Columbia University where, uh, you know, a lot more is a lot more international and people are a lot more, uh, I would say, sympathize with liberal democratic uh, norms, which Trump administration does not uh, represent. Um, so the last I, I would say like the last year, uh, a lot of people are waiting for for the general election with a lot of anticipation. Uh, you know, the numbers, uh, the polls uh, showing, uh, forecasting uh, a Biden-Harris landslide win, although a lot of people are very um, apprehensive and are, shall I say, cautiously optimistic. Uh, they know uh, that Trump is capable of, uh, of a surprise win. So a lot of people are cautiously optimistic, but also in the same time are hopeful that uh that 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 trump uh, will be defeated and so that they, they don't there weren't that much of a, a, a of a activity due to the pandemic so a lot of the campaigning has been has been online has been on the phone so i i've been speaking to a lot of my american friends american classmates who have been very active in in phone uh in phone banking talking to the people especially in the battleground state florida arizona pennsylvania uh trying to reach out to the vote to the voters and 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 trying to get them to vote in on by mail by in person uh the democratic party strategy is more into mailing ballot uh together uh, you know in line with their messaging on on the risk of coronavirus so um, there's a lot of a lot of anticipation, uh, which I think cannot be matched with with like physical activity due to the restriction uh, related to COVID uh, pandemic. Um, and and I think I, I remember on the set, November seventh, and we all are very aware that that the result won't come in on the third because of the amount of uh, unprecedented amount of mailing ballots. So it will time and every states are handling it different differently. Um, so I remember uh, I, I'm, I'm living in Upper West Side in New York. And I remember on the, on the 7th of November uh, at about 11 a.m. When, when CNN projected that Pennsylvania has been called for Biden, which pushed him up to above 20, 270 electoral college, which, which is needed for a win. I started hearing people screaming and, and, and uh, clapping and and mm -hmm. uh, congratulating each other on the street so i went out on the street and i saw celebration every corner of the street of new york in exactly. washington square park in times square mm -hmm. um so so a lot of euphoria a lot of i think people are those who are not i mean worth noting also that there were three million more people voted for hillary in 2016 and now uh with almost all of the voted counted uh, votes counted in in this this cycle of election, F over five million more American has voted for Biden uh, than Trump. So a lot of people are um, are tired. Are 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 uh, they they want something? They want someone else. So so uh, there were a lot of of hopeful uh, people on the street on on the on Saturday on the seventh of November, and and I think right now people just looking forward for inauguration on the 20th of January. All right, we'll take a break and we'll come back again to talk about uh, quite the, the tail end of our discussion, actually. We'll be talking about um, what else, what's next. So stay tuned, just have yourself some food or drinks and we'll come back with more discussion with both of our gentlemen. Don't go away.
All right, we're back. And uh, this question I want to pose to Mr. Stewart. Stuart, now 70% yes. is for, I mean, sorry, uh, more than 50% is for Joe Biden. Another close to 50%. Basically, it's half and half. All right. Now, former President Barack Obama, in, 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 a, in a recent interview, said the election results showed that USA is deeply divided and bitterly split. Now, how does America reconcile itself when, in the words of Obama, it's very hard for our democracy to function if we are operating on just completely different sets of facts. The facts coming from the Democrat, Democrats and the facts coming from Republicans. So can you give your thoughts on this? How do we go about How does America need to reconcile itself? Yes, well, I think that um, if we have to choose between Biden and Trump to unite people, then for sure <coughs> we've got the right man in Joe Biden. Um, as I indicated earlier, I, 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 if I'd been an American, I would have rather have seen Bernie Sanders, who's of course even older than Joe Biden, uh, to be the candidate because I prefer his policies and his approach and uh, he's a much better orator as well. Um, mm. But Joe Biden is certainly the man uh, with all his ex his political experience, his contacts, and uh, and so on. That he is the man, and and his his whole approach will, uh, I think, be the right one to unite Americans. But it's going to be a very difficult job, because as we saw uh, last Saturday in Washington, with the the tens of thousands of Trump followers and supporters out on the streets. Uh, they're not going to let this go. And Trump himself, of course, he's on a good thing as he sees it. And again, his ego is not going to let him let go of this thing. So there's, uh, there's going to be a continuation of uh, Trumpianism, if you like, to, for mm -hmm. want of a better word for it. Um, uh, so we've got to get used to that. He's going to try and disrupt as much as he possibly can, exactly as he's doing now with all the, the questioning of the voting and, and so on. Um, so, uh, yes, it's going to be a, a, a period of, 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 of um, continued division. And I don't see that changing. Personally, I don't see that um, changing in the foreseeable future, especially with a Trump still, you know, stoking up hate and fear <clears throat> amongst his base, as they like to call it. Yes. So I think that it, there's, a, there's a big job for the Democrats, of course, to counter that and to, to just keep, they've also got to keep being there and repeating the actual facts instead of the lies that are repeated by Trump. They've got to mm -hmm. counter that all the time and be aggressive in it. I, I often feel that the Democrats are far too nice, <laughs> too kind, um, uh, and uh, they should uh, adopt more, more of the aggressive tactics of Trump and his followers and his supporters. Um, not though, not to be like them, uh, with just uh, throwing lies out there. I, I, I think some, some calculations have been done of the four years of Trump. It's like tens of thousands of lies that have been produced during that time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the awful thing is that they also accuse others of the very things that they are guilty of you know like stealing yes, the election they talk about the democrats are now trying to steal the election um it by doesn't. questioning the voting but the highest uh, uh, people in the in in the land the the, yeah. the real experts on on voting have, have assured of the americans that this was the most secure election ever in in america's history and uh, but they want they're not going to believe that because they will just believe what trump tells them so he's got to be exposed at the same time he's got to be exposed for what he is a liar and a cheat uh, i think i think even a lot of his followers understand that he's an egomaniac they understand that but they've kind of accepted that as being part of the price you have to pay to get what he's convinced them uh, of being better better policies that will benefit them, which they don't. We've seen that already. We've seen that his ta you know, the, the big tax package of a few years ago um, benefited the working class people in no way whatsoever. On the contrary, mm -hmm. it's just benefited those who are already stinking rich. It's just in helped them increase their income and wealth.
So yeah. that those sort of things have got to be forced home much more uh, by the by the Democrats. It's it's it is of course much easier said than done, and. Uh, because he has somehow created for himself this platform and there's talk of him setting up his own TV channel or whatever, which will make it a more difficult job because we've already got one really nasty TV channel being Fox in inverted commas news. Um, so it's it's an uphill battle. All right. Saiful, what can Joe Biden do to heal the pain mm -hmm. and hurt on the aftermath of uh, brutal election? ever experienced by America yeah. after he will officially take his oath in January next year? I think definitely he's the, the, the man to, to unite America once again. Um, in his victory speech, he repeatedly said that he is uh, going to be a president. There's no blue state. There's no, there's no red state. He keep repeated, repeating that there's only the United States. Um, and so, so he's already beginning to, to, uh, put forth all these uh, uniting messages uh, in in his uh, speeches since uh, since the election, and I also wanted to point out that uh, in a lot of the uh, polls, uh, opinion polls, um, we might think that America is bitterly divided, but I think it's only along the politics that Trump is bringing in. I mean, the Trump brand of politics is 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 not. As, as Stuart pointed out, it's not left or right. It's it's about him. It's it's a, it's a personality cult, and unfortunately, he's not going to go away. But but not being in the White House, hopefully, you know, slowly he will be in the in the fringe of politics. But he's always going to be there. But I would like to point out that in a lot of opinion polls, that America are not as as divided as we think it is. We might we tempt really? to think that that they are, but Many Americans are, you know, majority of Americans are in support of, of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Uh, they are in support of a stronger uh, social security. They are mostly, a majority are uh, in favor of uh, women's, uh, you know, they are pro-choice, uh, uh, you know, and they are also agreeable that, that you have to do something about climate change. Uh, climate, uh, climate change is not as divided of a topic as Trump administration, as the Republican, would like to uh, us to think. If you look at those opinion polls, majority of the Americans are agreeable in this thing. So I think one of the things that Biden can do, Biden Harris administration can do, is to bring back discourse to to policy and not just about uh, what what Trump has done is just to bring everything into his sphere. Everything is about him. What Biden can do is to bring the discussion back into policy. This is the problem that we have. This is what we want to do and why it makes sense. And I think if, if we have an administration that is a lot more focused on the policy instead of a cult of personality, I think we might be surprised and we might be fine. We might find that, you know, we might find that uh, all of this common sense policy has a lot more support. I mean, we see Florida, for example, in this past election uh, last week, that they voted for Trump overwhelmingly. Uh, unfortunately, Trump has, is a president that won the most, uh, uh, won Florida by the biggest margin. But what they also did down the ballot, they also voted to increase minimum wage from eleven dollars uh, to fifteen dollars. So, this kind of policies that Democrats have been trying to push. That, that will help a lot of people in America, that will have a lot of blue collars workers who are angry, who are the base supporter of Trump. Mm. They are actually kind of policies that a lot of Americans are in favor of. It's just that Trump has right. been painting it as communism, as socialist, socialism. as something bad. As right. something no. bad. Because it's all about uh, him. Right. So, Saiful. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah. Just to interject here uh, before you say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, now, which I hope uh, Stuart can add on. Uh, look, Republicans are quite out loud there talking about supporting uh, Trump and uh, Trump has not, uh, should not be conceding and things like that. But somehow, Democrats are not really showing themselves there. We don't see much of Democrats as a party, as a team player, uh, in support or giving that kind of juice for Joe Biden to go out front and be stronger. 
I, these are some of the critics that uh, have been given uh, to the Democrats uh, by some of those I know. Can you respond on that? And I, I, I even uh, just now we heard uh, Stuart saying uh, the Democrats are just too nice. <laughs> so, what's your what's your thought on this? Is it is that to me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that Saiful first. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think uh, the Democrat has a lot of soul searching to do. First of all, they have not been able to materialize the blue wave that was expected in this election. Biden has won, but down the ballot, they have lost seats in the House uh, of Representatives, and they have failed to over uh, to take uh, to take the Senate as they were widely expected to. So actually, overall, this election has been bad for Democrats. So I think um, that so that is also call. why. Sorry. There's a wake up call then for them. Yes, absolutely. There's something wrong with the way the Democrat is approaching people. Their messaging are not resonating with the people. Um, and it's something that they need to really look into because their policies, as I mentioned earlier, they are not uh, very controversial. A lot of people are in, are in favor of those kind of things that they are trying to push forward. Um, mm -hmm. Another reason why I think they are not as uh strong uh, coming out strongly as as the trump supporters or republican party is also because biden has won like there is no need for nancy pelosi or chuck schumer or any other uh democratic uh politicians to go out there and to reassert the fact that joe biden has won there, there's no need for the same uh and uh panic energy that you can see in the republican party or some of the Republican uh, politicians to 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 give the same kind of enthusiasm to to Biden Harris uh, uh, ticket because they have won. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's it. <laughs> but uh, okay, Stuart, you as as uh, as an international observer, <laughs> what's your take? Yeah. No, I, I think what Saifin is saying is absolutely right. He's absolutely right. He's put hit, hit the nail on the head. I was, this is what I was trying to sort of say in my way earlier that the Democrats have got to get onto policy and, sh but, and at the same time as telling people what their policies are, because we know, as Saifel pointed out, they are popular with people. They are very popular. Well, who's not against universal health care, for goodness sake, you know? Um, which is which we take for granted in the civilized countries of Europe, for example, but which in America they don't they can't take for granted because they don't have it. This is what Bernie Sanders has been uh, uh, trying to achieve as well, amongst the many great things that he wants to implement. Um, and so, uh, it, it was a disappointing election for the Democrats, perhaps as Saifel is saying, because they weren't strong enough in putting out their policies. But they, as I say, again, they've got to put out their own policies, make them make them known to people because they're popular. But at the same time, as exposing Trump that they are not the policies of Trump, he is working in the opposite direction. He, he is working for, if he's got policies at all, he's working for policies that will benefit people like him, rich people, rich privileged elitists. You know, I thought it was so funny in the, two, well, it would be funny if it wasn't so serious, in the 2016 election, you didn't hear it so much this time, about draining the swamp and getting at the establishment. If there is anybody who is swamp and establishment, it's Donald D J. Trump, for goodness sake. And and I, because I personally agree. Yes, drain the swamp, get it. The you know weaken the establishment, uh, but you don't do that by voting for Donald J. Trump. And that's what the Democrats have got to get across to people. Could I just add a, a, in relation to this as well, uh, Nizal? The um, I I, I talk about the, the, this this accusation coming from Trump that the Democrats are trying to steal the election, and these accusations that come from him that actually are things that he is guilty of. He and his Republicans have been stealing the elections, not just one election. And as uh, Saifo said, unfortunately, the Democrats have made no gains. They've lost seats in the House. They've not gained the Senate. They might do with the two runoffs in Georgia in the beginning of January, we hope. But as of now, they've made no gains uh, and they haven't taken the Senate. They have not made any uh, gains at all in state legislatures or state governorships. Mm -hmm. 
And there, there's a lot of power, actually. And that relates to my point of stealing this thing about stealing the election. The people who are stealing and have been stealing the election for years are the Republicans. And you know the man who instigated it? Mike Pence. In his state of, uh, I think it's Indiana, he was the governor, right? If I remember correctly. He was the one who got all the Republicans to uh, 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 initiate measures and implement measures in their state legislatures uh, uh, to, uh, one, create rules, really difficult rules and regulations uh, on voter IDs and all kinds of difficulties put in the way of minorities to vote. Because they know that minorities know that the Democrats are the party of the underdog, and therefore they, they are not likely to vote Republican. They are the ones who have gerrymandered boundaries to benefit Republicans. They are the ones who have made it really difficult when you finally have got the right to vote, despite all their difficult rules and and. and tests that you have to pass to get a vote, once you've got it, they then make it really hard for you to vote by not giving you the number of polling stations in poor and minority community areas that they will have in, in richer, more privileged areas. So it will, you know, you won't, it won't be as convenient for you, if you like, to, to, to go and vote. All these things have been done in, in, for years now uh, to uh, help Republicans and they've and they've succeeded. So I think that's something that has to be known, and that has contributed as well to the Democrats not doing better, perhaps in those state state elections. And uh, uh, Trump has been uh, another thing that has been going on for the last few years that also affects how politics, practical politics, are in, implemented. Trump accuses the Democrats of wanting to pack the Supreme Court. They've been packing the Supreme Court all the time, not only the Supreme Court, but state courts. Trump has been appointing the most idiotic individuals sometimes as well as judges and so on in state courts. And that's kind of surprise. And because of that, I thought that a lot of these stupid uh, uh, questioning, uh, a lot of the stupid questioning of the voting procedures and, and, and the voting process would have succeeded better because of all these stooges, Trump stooges, sitting on state courts around America. But fortunately, even having that, they haven't succeeded because people know at the end of the day, it was a fair election. And uh, the, 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 the accusations of any kind of voter fraud are totally unfounded. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I, I guess uh, it's a never ending story. I think we can <laughs> to come to a conclusion. You know, by all accounts, my friends, the 2020 United States election may be remembered as an extraordinary time in the country's history. But it remains to be seen whether it will be merely a chapter in America's story, a longer running saga with consequences for democracy, or the faltering start of a Trump political dynasty. We'll see. All right, thank you very much, both of you, Mr. Stewart and Mr. Saiful. We'll talk again as time goes by because things are not ending yet. So until then, okay, my friends, that's all for now. Thank you for watching International Affairs on Nizal and Co. Uh, the avant-garde online talk show of the millennium. Watch out for more engaging discourses and conversations on world issues in our coming upcoming Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay blessed. I'm Rizal Muhammad signing off. Bye.